We're talking with Robin Good about curation. So, um, Robin, I loved your, your series of articles. I, I highly recommend them. And I just wanted to get uh, directly from you a few thoughts about curation online, starting with what, what do you think the importance and the place of curation is uh, today for, for anybody who's online? I think uh, you could see it this way. Uh, we've reached somehow the limit of uh, understanding and making sense of information just by going out to Google, typing out a query and getting a listing of things that could be relevant to us. I think we, this is like, you know, having been hungry and going to McDonald's, you know, it's fast food information, but uh, I, I want something more, like when I go to a restaurant, I can choose the type of restaurant, the type of foods, the quality, the level, uh, the type of customer service and so on. So I am looking for a new level of uh, accessing information whereby I'm not just trying to list and rank information, but I'm trying to make sense of information. This is what people want more and more. Because one article by itself, uh, or a link, or a resource, or a video, sometimes is just a little opening hole into understanding that topic. While if there was some kind of intermediate layer, whether done by an algorithm or by people contributing and working with an algorithm to collect things that make sense on a certain topic, I think we would be uh, in, a, in, a, in a position to inform and learn much faster and much better than we can do now. What qualities do you think uh, a, a curator ought to have? Well, it's got to be somewhat of a very curious person and a passionate person in the area where he wants to curate. I don't think you can just go about curating a topic because you wake up and that's the thing you want to do. Well, you certainly can and gain confidence with it with time, but it, it would be best that you go and curate something that you're already very passionate about, that you've been exposed to, so that you have some sensitivity, some antennas that allow you to understand what is good, what is better, because then it becomes a point of who are you doing this for? Are you just an artist painting something for yourself or are you creating something for a specific audience as, uh, trying to intercept a specific need and resolve it with that uh, channel of information? So I would think that knowing the audience and being an expert on the topic helps someone curate uh, whatever type of information items he has at his disposal. That, that's, I think, are the key elements. Then you, you got to be very transparent and uh, give full credit to whoever you're gathering in and expose, actually, the best qualities of these sources and people and add something of your own. That is, the ultimate quality of the curator is like the one for a DJ. I mean, what's the difference between putting a mixtape and a live DJ? I think those same qualities apply somewhat to a content curator. That is the ability to listen closely to what type of volumes at the moment he's serving and then providing a context so that the type of information he is or she's collecting makes sense to them. So you may have to change titles, may have to change descriptions, images, order, how you just oppose things, but you have to customize that flow for the purpose, theme, and public you're doing that for. So who, who you are should come, come through to, to some degree. Your, your sensibility and your, your point of view ought to not be completely suppressed when you're, you're curating. There may be different instances and situations, business-wise, uh, uh, pure research and information activities. Uh, it may vary. I, I wouldn't be so sure that all the time you would have to bring out your personality, but uh, there is no way that you cannot somehow stand in some position. So there would be a generic position and maybe a more... Uh, 
uh, define positions for those who have, I don't know, to take political stances or research things where there are opposing views. But again, there, you may be a great curator by just standing out for your position or maybe a, even a better curator by curating all the positions that are out there and allowing people to discover which ones fits best for them. I mean, both of them are valid to me. All right. What, what is your advice to, to, to people about how to go about this? And I know you have a, a very detailed workflow. Can you just, someone wants to go ahead and start curating and they've got a passion for a subject and some knowledge about it. What, how, how do they go about it? The first thing you want to do is to collect your sources your uh, the places where you're going to gather that information you want to start from some basis so these may be some blogs uh, some video channels uh, some Twitter personalities fan pages anything especially that is capable of producing an RSS feed is very useful for curating and creating channels of information dedicated to a specific topic you, you want them to become familiar with something that is key uh, and technically, before it was difficult to understand, is what I call a persistent search. That is the ability to set out a search for a topic and be alerted anytime something comes up so that you can discover new things, but you can discover also new sources for information that you may not be aware of. And then uh, when you bring together different sources, ones you know, the ones you're going to discover gradually, core part of your job is to select, to pick those that really count and again to customize them, personalize them for your audience, for the specific uh, communication objective you set out for yourself with that channel or stream of information you're creating. So the job to describe is as simple as that. You, you, you may want then to share this information, to package it up and distribute it in different ways, but the core elements are basically those ones there. So many people then just worry about, hey, what is the tool that can do all this stuff in a simple way without needing me to know HTML, RSS, tags, uh, persistent searches, and so on. So let me get right to that. And that uh, is, if I were to advise a tool that I'm not associated with commercially, that I think helps anyone who's a novice to get good grips on what curating information can do and how it can be done, is the one you're using yourself since a few days, and that's Scoopit, S-C-O-O-P dot I-T. That's a very simple to use free tool that allows you to aggregate, filter, search, and put together information, even lay out and publish it within a workflow that is extremely easy and almost intuitive to pick up. And I also like kind of the community feature of Scoopit in that the um, there are people can can recommend sources to you, and then you have a stream of sources besides the ones that you've gone out and and found that you can go through and you can either. Uh, use them, you can discard them, or you can say, I don't want to use this source anymore. So your stream becomes smarter as you, as you, you uh, curate it. It's a tool I like a lot too. Yes, there are actually very many tools. In the, if you recall, on 2005, uh, what was the, the month of the year, I think March or April, I was in San Francisco with you on Mountain Time of Pai, as we were talking for the first time in the beautiful scenery about what we're discussing now, that is news curation, and you were looking at me and, me and wondering whether um, that made any sense. Uh, I'm so glad that, that this time has passed and this has become a reality. I was so excited last year and in the last few months where about 60 different curation, content curation tools have come out. I've created a, a, a map you've probably seen, which I update every week. And what is surprising is now all these different areas for content curation because we started thinking RSS, curating content, and news, creating news radars, as I call them, specific thematic channels. But now there's a universe of other possibilities that is, there is video curation. There is um, uh, product curation, there is fashion curation, which is fantastic. Go and see this site that's called Polyvore, 
P O L Y V O R E and see what people can do curating together different fashion elements like shoes and jewelry and other gadgets and create uh, curated uh, sets uh, that are really uh, interesting and visually appealing. So I think the horizon is in understanding that basically anything can be curated. It doesn't have to be only news. You can curate stuff that doesn't be doesn't have to be connected to Twitter or stuff that happens right at this moment. I mean, even collecting and curating what is out there for the past, how we've gotten to the idea of curation from the beginning until now, it's something useful. And I think the direction of the future is if not for Google, for us to create an alternative type of Google where we can collaboratively curate the information that is out there. Think for a moment if uh, instead of depending of secret algorithms to decide for us what is relevant, we could choose individually, each one of us, which are the ranking elements we want to use or tap into your ones and the one of my friend and the other friend and create our own ecosystem of uh, curated algorithms, uh, curated collections of information of how to make sense of reality instead of depending of somebody who depends on profits and exclusive exclusively on its own earnings to decide what's best for us. I mean, that's absurd for me because the world now lives in an economy of information. We depend so much on it that it's not just a matter of doing a business online. It's a matter of, of allowing each, uh, each one of us like to breathe or get water to be able to access information and make some good use of it. Uh, I don't know if you under, uh, agree with this or not, but to me, it's a planetary question that the people should start uh, addressing. Yes, that's why I, I think that a, a fundamental literacy about curation is something that everybody ought to know about. It, not just for specialists, just like there are, are websites that get a lot of traffic. There are also many, many, many websites that may not get the huge amount of traffic, but we wouldn't have the really rich uh, ecosystem online if we didn't have so many contributors. So I, I really like your, your vision, which you, you present uh, so enthusiastically and passionately of, of really a population of, of curators, that it's, it's not just for the individuals, it's for the, the whole system. Um, make it much, much richer uh, than, it, than it is already. Yeah, we want to have different points of view. We just, uh, I mean, uh, should information ranking be a uh, Fundament, fundamentalist religion because what is that? I mean, if there is one entity that secretly knows what is true or not, isn't that religion? So I don't want to depend on some religious organization to decide what's out there. And I want to be able to tap on different points of views. I want to be able to contribute to help other people understand what I've discovered. And the system we have now does not allow me to do this. So more and more, I'm looking for people who can be gateways to the information I need. And this must be trusted people. So we need a, a Google of the people for the people, a, a, an army of individual curators doing this for ourselves. That's what we need, yes. This is wonderful, thank you so much. And, and thank you for your wonderful hospitality in Rome. I will never forget it and, and hope to see you there again soon. All right, thank you, Howard, it was Robin. a pleasure. Bye-bye. You too, bye.